Prime Minister Peter O'Neill announces construction of Erawe to Kikori Highway. Universities sign MOA for quality education. And Lay City Dwellers defeat Oro FC in NSL. This is National MTV News with Mirba Tolo. Thank you for joining us. This is Saturday's News. Prime Minister Peter O'Neill this week announced the construction of a road link from Southern Highlands to Gulf Province. The Erawe Sembarigi to Kikori Road has been highlighted as an economic corridor by the national government. Prime Minister O'Neill says the road will have an impact on PNG's economy and the lives of the people. It is not every day the Prime Minister of the country visits these people. The sight of the Prime Minister drove the thousands mad as they called out his name. Moreover, he was there to announce major development projects in the Kagua Erawe district, a district in the Southern Highlands province that has seen little government assistance for the last 20 years. As part of the announcement of major development projects in the Southern Highlands province, the Prime Minister announced the construction of the new Southern Highlands Highway, a highway that is seen as a vital link for development and service delivery. The road link will connect thousands living along the borders of Southern Highlands and Gulf Province. A vital link, as Mr. O'Neill says, would relieve the burden of people traveling to Leh to buy goods from the sea. Construction of the Simberegi Erawe to Kikori Road will start in the coming days. Stanley Over Jr. National MTV News. Southern Highlands Governor William Powey wants Southern Highlanders to change their old ways and allow development. The Governor challenged all businessmen and women in the province to stop the big man mentality and work together for the future of Southern Highlands province. Governor Powey says it is time for the people of Southern Highlands to change. Powey says for years the reputation of Southern Highlanders has been ruined by their own attitude. The governor made this announcement recently during the Prime Minister Peter O'Neill's visit in the province. The governor was hard at local businessmen and women in the province. He says for years the province has been producing major resources like oil and gas, but see little benefit from it. God give me blow for the well. God give me blow Moran well. God give me blow Gobe well. Want them all kind and resources start long. Support him, economy me blow me blow. Go work in business that come a good man. Go on house not doing that come a good man. Moreover, in supporting this, Finance Minister and Taripori MP James Marape says the country is financially stable. However, it is up to the people to change for a better future. Money you not have sought, and by sought come sorting suppose you man and marry, passing to you, you know, send this, you start to send here. Stanley Ovid Jr., National MTV News. Village courts in Papua New Guinea have few women as court officials. However, the Morabe Provincial Administration wants to change this. Through the Australia Papua New Guinea Law and Justice Partnership Program, more women in Morabe are being trained as court officials. Recently, three women were sworn in by Senior Magistrate Jeremiah Singomat in Leh. Diana Martin is one of the three women magistrates from CSC. The idea to work as a court official developed following an increase in the number of cases of violence against women and girls in a home village. Me, me got plenty all kind of violence and me stop. So me have a through long stand up behalf of Mary inside long district blow me 
na mi batrain best long wak one time community blomi long stretim abrusim na wak about one time country blomi osem for a nation like Papua New Guinea where most families live in a patrilineal society Having women as court officials is unacceptable, and men tend to think women should not perform roles in court decisions. But this is slowly changing. With women court officials like Diana, she aims to perform a positive role in a local level government as a court official. At the swearing-in ceremony, all four court officials pledged to uphold the constitution and serve as court officials at their respective villages. Because something also more must have the responsibility to Okay, now working relationship with them all land agencies. Okay. They will mostly be dealing with land disputes, mediation, sorcery killings, investigations, and extramarital affairs. Takla Gunga, National MTV News, Lay. Universities sign MOA to open up access for quality education and more eyes on PNG as Pacific Island countries see investment opportunities. Those stories after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to the news. The Independent Competition Consumer Commission has announced fuel price increases for this month. IEEC Chief Executive Officer Dr. Billy Manoka says this is due to the increase in international oil prices. In Port Mosby, the price of petrol will increase by 25 toya per litre and for diesel by 17 toya, while other centres will see additional costs on freight charges. IEEC enforcement and compliance officers will conduct inspections at all service stations to ensure consumers are not overcharged. Dr Manaka further adds that the extent of change in domestic prices will depend on the exchange rate of Akina against the US dollar. Two leading institutions in the country have joined hands to share resources and push government's goal for quality higher education. Heads of Divine Word University and University of Technology signed a memorandum of agreement early this month in Madang to signify this collaboration. Divine Word University President Father Jan Shuba says this would increase enrollment and enhance the quality of education. The agreement will see the two universities collaborate in exchange research activities, students and staff. This will also include combined supervision of postgraduate students, joint research project and training through quality use of ICT infrastructure and professional skills development. Unitech Vice Chancellor Dr. Albert Schramm and DW President Father Jan Zuba signed the MOA witnessed by senior officers from both universities. DW President Farah Yan Zuba said, while it is important to increase access to higher education through sharing of research activities, it is also important not to compromise the quality of research, learning and teaching. He said this opportunity will see an increase in enrollment at both universities. Unitex Vice Chancellor Dr. Albert Schramm added that the university is now focused to play its role and assist in helping the government find solutions for quality education in the country. The two universities will now begin work this year to achieve this goal. Jack LaPava Jr. National MTV News. Deputy Prime Minister Leo Dion says more Pacific Island countries are seeing Papua New Guinea as an important avenue for economic investment. His comments come following the increase in economic activities in Port Mosby, Ley and Mount Hagen. The Deputy Prime Minister made these remarks at the opening of Elamoto's Logistics Centre in Ley. Papua New Guinea is experiencing an economic boom with the construction of national highways, infrastructural developments and the expansion of private businesses into provincial towns. Today, the Elamotos Brands in Ley opened its new logistics centre as its business commitment to the nation. This will see the increase in supply of new vehicles and spare parts to customers, mainly government departments and PMV operators in Morobe, Medang and the Highlands provinces. This is the sign of progress within the economy of this country. And it is not a mistake. Alamoros has got a history in this country. They've been here over 50 years and they've been partners uh, all these years in the development and progress of this nation. Even the new centre sits on 38,000 square metres of land and houses three core functions which previously were spread across a number of sites. 
These functions include a distribution center, vehicle bound yard, and a holding area for up to 320 vehicles. It is a good thing for the Morobe province as well as uh, the nation as a whole. Deputy Prime Minister Leo Dion said the nation is experiencing a degree of development and with the expansion of Elamoto's logistics center, Elamoto's is contributing to the economic development of PNG through the provision of fleet. Takla Gunga, National MTV News, Lay. More than 50 people with special needs at Papa Village outside Port Mosby have called on the government to recognize their aspirations and empower them. They expressed this view while receiving donations from the Kapi Foundation yesterday. UPNG journalism student Jacob Nero with this report. Giving recognition to other people with disabilities. Brown Kapi made a special call on government that people living with special needs must be loved, cared and be empowered. Kapi made this statement while donating three wheelchairs, clothes and food items to more than 50 people living with special needs in Papa Pillage. I realized that the government cannot or was not addressing people with disabilities, and I think we all know that. We find that the government focuses on uh, very other important issues and they tend to forget the marginalized Papua New Guineans and the very marginalized and the people who are really at the bottom. Kapi says most times people with special needs are ignored, suppressed and left behind. And all these successive governments over the years and over the time has not focused and who have not, who have not come up with inclusive programs to address people with disabilities like myself and others. This is the first ever visit outside of Port Mosby by Kapi Foundation and the foundation is willing to do more. Papa Pilot's chip on behalf of the community thank the Kapi Foundation and says it is a first ever recognition by an organization. I was thank you very much for your presence today and also the gift that you have given us for the community. The donated materials will help the individuals and make gradual improvement in their life. Well, the national government's focus is on prioritizing developments for people living with normal life. The Kabi Foundation has believed that the government has marginalized this group of people. He urged the government to refocus its framework of development. Jacob Nero, National MTV News. You're watching National MTV News. We'll have all today's sporting action for you in Trukai Sports right after these messages. Trukai Sports. Welcome to Trukai Sports. First up to the NSL, Lay City Dwellers were victorious by four goals to nil as Raymond Gnimba and Nigel Dabinyaba double killed off the match against an Aura FC team struggling to find rhythm with a number of key personnel out. In the second half of the doubleheader, FC Port Mosby would face an Admiralty squad yet to register a win. Early goal by Andrew Lepani in the first half set the pace for his team as FC Port Mosby looked to secure yet another victory over Admiralty. Admiralty used a lot of width to switch play in order to counter FC Port Moresby's strong defence, but it was a Harry Jenkins bolter midway through the first half that doubled their lead. The flick over the head by Admiralty striker Michael Foster soon saw them narrow the lead, and it was confusion in the edge of the 18 yards box that allowed Admiralty to equalise both teams heading into the half with two goals apiece. In the second half, the goal proved elusive for Admiralty, Captain Michael Foster trying on occasion but unable to get the goal as FC Port Moresby's centre defender Cyril Muta was composed. And it fell to his defensive partner Ethan Yagas who scored the deciding goal to give them a 3-2 victory over their rivals. Earlier in the day an understrength RFC side took on a Lay City Dwellers team who felt they had been peaking at the right time of the competition and they recorded their biggest ever margin with a four goal to nil thrashing of the Aura side. Jeremy Mogi, National MTV Sports. To Rugby League now and six players have been recruited into the Enga Meox team for the 2015 season. The players were scouted from suburban competitions, Rugby 9's tournaments and Rugby 7's from around the country. Godwin Eki reports. 
The announcement was made yesterday by CEO Timothy Lepa and Anga Governor Peter Ipatis. The boys were selected through criteria of game ethics, skills, techniques, strength, respect, dedication and commitment. All players have played in various rugby league competitions in and around the country and at international level. Maski you big plus time, we just lost our David Loko uh, to um, play his next. You know, so we say no discipline, no hunters. We don't want to take him back. And we say we say we say no discipline. Maski all players, all superstar or really all maski come to play. Only maski got discipline. CEO Timothy Lepa was happy with the selection and is looking forward to working with the boys. The Coca-Cola Ipitas Cup is obviously the design uh, 16 years back just to, uh, to, scout, to scout talent from the rural part of Papua New Guinea. It was, uh, we designed it purposely for, for hangings uh, to select the milks. But when competition went into first, second year, and third year, we see that the interest was big for Bobby Guinea. We came back uh, playing, while playing the Patas Cup, the uh, Enga Miox scouted me, so it's a, it's a privilege and an honor to play for the uh, Enga Miox. And I'm looking forward, it, forward to it, and I'll give my best for the Enga Miox. The main motive of Enga Miox is to find and recruit raw talents in and around Papua New Guinea and to identify hidden talents that would one day represent the country at regional and international competitions. Godwin Eki, National MTV Sports. To the NRL now and the Parramatta Eels have produced the perfect start to the 2015 season campaign, crushing the Manly Sea Eagles 42-12. In an explosive encounter, just as everyone expected, the Eels, led by their forward pack, hit hard and dominated from the middle of the park. Dion Kombeng reports. The Eels had no problem starting the season with a bang without former star fullback Jared Hayne. The match got off to a heated start. Ex Manly now turned Eel Anthony Watmo was at his usual best, running hard in the forwards. Parramatta started the game strong with blockbuster winger Semi Radradra crossing the line in the seventh minute. And later, Hopuate from a pass from Chris Sando shaped a pass and got between defenders to make it 10 points to nil after 16 minutes. And there's another Parramatta try. It is 10 nil at Burton. The Seagull struck back with four and combining well with Brett Stewart to get the score back to 10 points to six. Brett Stewart scores for Manly. Manly took the lead, scoring in the left-hand corner with Blair running in Manly's second try. However, when the Sea Eagles looked to be taking control of the match, Radradra grabbed his second in the first half, giving Parramatta a handy 16 points to 12 lead at halftime. In the second half, the Eels proved too strong for the Sea Eagles and ran in four more tries and sealed the game 42 points to 12. It sees them draw level with Rabbitohs with more than a 30-point differential in the season opener. Dion Kombang, National MTV Sports. And that's all we have for Trukai Sports tonight. Up next, weather details for tonight and tomorrow. Trukai Sports. True Kai Sports. Taking a look at the weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow in the southern region, Port Mosby, Kerama and Daru showers at times. Alatao and Popandeta showers then rain. In the Momasa region, all centers to expect showers then rain showers and rain. In the New Guinea Islands, all centers to expect showers then rain except for Kimbe. Kimbe you can expect squally showers. And in the Highlands region, all centres to expect rain. And before we go, recapping our headlines, Prime Minister Peter O'Neill announces construction of Erave Kikori Highway, Divine Word University and Unitech sign MOA to embrace quality higher education, and Lay City Dwellers upset Oro FC for goals to nil in the NSL. And that has been the news, sports and weather for today, Saturday, the 7th of March 2015. From the MTV News team, pleasant viewing. Good night.